Cool. Cool, man. So, where are you there? Are you in your studio? Yeah, I'm in the studio. Ah, oh, cool. Came down to hopefully paint today, but I'm not feeling it. Oh, man. It's weird, isn't it, though? It's like sometimes you do feel like... I don't know. Some days you, and it's like when you plan to do something and then you turn, it actually comes to doing it and you just haven't got it inside you. I don't know what that actually is. It's weird. I don't know. It's weird. It really is, man. Uh, you know, I feel like a lot of that is sometimes you just got to force yourself, but I feel like, you know, time is, it's, it's, it's necessary to choose when you use that. Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. I, I think, I do understand what you're saying because sometimes I think if you, if especially in a commit man, we we work with commissions, don't we? Like we, our primary job is to work with a commission, so you have no choice but to actually force through sometimes what can be a creative lull. Although some, I don't really think I've ever had it with tattooing. You know, I don't know if it's something that works its way out over a period of time, like uh, maybe how nervous you can get from tattooing. But I don't know. There's never a day. That I go in I have, and I'm labored, I actually, you know? Uh, I actually have a theory on why uh, that doesn't happen with tattooing. It's uh, the social involvement. So when I come into the studio and it's just a canvas and me, I don't care about the canvas. It's It can sit there for a thousand years and it'll be right where I left it. When you have a client, it's like they're communicating with you and it's it's almost like there's already a connection there. So you feel good about working. I yeah. seem to do better. Like sometimes I have calls like this with friends who are also painting and I seem to do better that way than uh, when I'm just in the studio alone. Yeah, I think that's a good idea actually. I never even thought of it like that. There is a social aspect. Cause nine times out of 10 when you're, say maybe when you're creating a home, you are under your own guidance aren't you and you, there's no the, the only person you're i don't know trying to impress or not even impressed trying to push forward and get something done for is yourself and i think nowadays that's even harder with the distractions that we've got you know like uh when you're on your own but when you're at work yeah you seem to just it, it's just you've got the social aspect you've got a person to talk to nine times out of ten you've got your work colleagues like you say and it just seems to be a bit more of a creative place to not have that lull. Yeah, I know what you mean, man. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So, so how have you been anyway? I don't want to talk too much about that because I've got loads of stuff I want to ask you about you specifically, but how have you been anyway? Have you been managing to stay creative during this process? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've been on quarantine. I've never gotten uh, unemployment in my life, but I've been getting it through this, which it's not paying the bills, but it's coming close enough to where I'm not in a financial uh, situation at this point. So uh, I've really just been, I've worked on a few paintings. I started this one behind me. Uh, it's one of my, it's my second palette knife painting, uh, which is very difficult for me on this one. Uh, and yeah, I've done, I did like a little gouache painting as well. Uh, and uh, now that the season's heating up here, it's uh, now fishing season. So I've been doing a bit of that. And I love to go out and enjoy the environment and kind of uh, enjoy the beauty of Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think that's – it's so – freaking hard man to just be it was so quick as well how we were all just thrust into this and you realize that you've got a it's a new way of living and a new way of life and you're carrying a lot of things over from like what you normally do you know you create art and you i see you're out quite a lot fishing and exploring and hiking etc and just enjoying uh, nature in a sense but after a certain period of time there's always so much you can do with that before you just crave uh, tattooing crave your actual job i think we've right. got you know, we've got one of the best jobs in the whole world. So to be able to, 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 to not do that and to, to sit on your hands and not tattoo, it's fucking right. painful at times, man. It really is. And I, I remember one person said to me, um, was, they were like, do you think, it's one of my closest friends, he's like, he was talking to me in a voice message and he said to me, I was thinking about you the other day, man. Do you think that you will have, like, will have to relearn certain aspects of it? And I was like, <laughs> uh... I don't know. No, I don't think so. Will I? You know, but I don't think I will. I've se I'm seeing people go back to work and they seem to I think it's They're muscle picking memory. picking up right where they left off. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, lucky enough to be quarantined with my business partner, his lady, my lady. We all live in the same household together. So uh, we've actually had a couple days where we all came in and stat- tattooed nines on each other in representation of the studio. Um, and then my lady, you know, she's always trying to get tattooed by me. So she's <laughs> like, hey, we got time. So uh, I did like a little bit of work on her. And I was actually very nervous at first. Uh, but you find once you get in, it's like riding a bike. You just like get right back on and, uh, it's like second nature and it felt, I'm going to, I'm, I don't mean to rub it in, but it felt so good to be back for a minute. (laughs) Uh, It was was really nice. And I actually felt like my speed was there. Like I was like, man, I'm moving quick today. Like I was in the zone. It was, it was cool to feel like, you know, I was able to pick it up right where I left off. Cause you do get that anxiety and that fear about like, am I, am I going to be good? Can I, do I even know how to pull a line anymore? And, uh, for me, I, I suffer from tremors. Uh, my hands shake a good bit, um, just in daily life. Uh, and I remember starting out when you add that with a bit of nervousness, it amplifies and my tremors would get really fucking bad. My hands would be shaky. Uh, but coming back in, it was like, yeah, I was fine. I was right back where I was. No problems. Yeah, and that's one of the scariest things, man. Like, that was one of the things I was wanting to talk to you about. And then, well, I was going to uh, carry on the conversation with, and then you just took it straight to it. I think that's probably one of the only aspects for me. If, it come, if, if the first tattoo I have to do, well, I've got to do it at some point, is, uh, you know, I have to fully line the tattoo first. Um, that's probably where you feel the most like, oh, fuck. You know, like, uh, because it's almost like welding or something like that. It's tattooing, you know, it's a fine point and you have to move in a precise manner and, um, you learn it over a period of time and it becomes muscle memory. But when you do it, if you've taken some time off and you've not really lined for a short space of time, man, when you start shaking and, but the thing is, is you're in front of someone. So like, and they can clearly see you shaking right. and this, oh, yeah. Happened, yeah, man, that's happened a few times. I've, I've had, I've done numerous tattoos where I'm like, I feel so confident pulling lines, going through different, um, needle groupings and everything feels good you know from a three to a five to a 14 or whatever everything feels good but then there'll be sometimes when you come in and you're just like everything's shaky you know like you're just like oh fuck and i and that is exactly what you were talking about then man right right yeah it's fucking crazy yeah, man stuff. so it's like um so you're talking about like painting as well there like that's one of the things i wanted to talk to you about because I saw the other day you did the gouache painting. You've done quite a few recently and you've done some watercolor ones as well over the time that I've been following you. But mainly one of the, some of the, well, the gouache one the other day was super impressive with the baby cactus. But what I was trying to get to there was <laughs> you go from like a super hyper realistic Renaissance style to a, a really caricature illustrative version of a baby cactus in gouache. Like, has painting always been with you? Was it with you before tattooing, or is it some? Or was it something that came into your life? Like, um, honestly, tattooing? so I've kind, of, I've gone like it's been a ramp up through the years. Uh, you know, I've always grown up loved drawing. Um, so you know, I I like the feeling of certain uh, materials. Like I will, you'll never see me do a charcoal. Uh, just because it's like nails on a chalkboard to me, it it irritates me. It's messy. I don't like being messy. Uh, so I did a lot of things with ballpoint pen before I got into tattooing. And, uh, you know, that's basically what landed me in my apprenticeship because my, uh, the guy who apprenticed me, you know, saw that I was, what I was doing with ballpoint pen and was like, dude, you'll, you'll do fine. So then I come into tattooing and I realize I got to do things in color and I had never really done anything in color. And it was like terrifying. I had no idea about color theory or painting, but I got into tattooing and was like, now I'm an artist. I'm an, I literally have to make art my life. So, uh, you know, I started messing with some acrylics. I did a couple of acrylic paintings. Um, and that was, it, it was pretty, intuitive for me even though i kept my color schemes very simplified um i've always gone into realism as a learning tool uh i think you know a lot of people see realism as one of the higher steps on the chart but for me it's it's one of the learning tools you use you know you do replication so you can figure out how to apply color value light 
Um, and then from that, you can start these distorting reality and make something more, uh, you know, outside of that. Yeah. So, dude, uh, that's you know, genius. It's, been, it's been kind of step by step. You know, I started with obviously actually before acrylic, I did color pencil acrylic. Then I went into watercolor, but watercolor to me is one of the harder mediums. I don't know why I see these people do these paintings where it's like almost sloppy, but so crisp and clean. I think it's I'm really, like, yeah, it's yo, really unpredictable. It's like, it's super unpredictable it, to a certain degree. It's kind of hard to control. Um, you know, I feel like with, you know, gouache, I don't, that was my first wash painting I did was at Cactus and I absolutely loved it. Um, so I just bought like a beginner gouache set and I realized I need more colors and I need to actually invest in better stuff because I really liked it. Um, it moves a lot more uh, fluid with like wet on wet. Um, anyone who does oils will kind of understand that, like being able to paint on something and have it move while you keep moving with the painting. Yeah. Uh, for me is one of my favorites, you know, acrylic is kind of like you put a brush stroke there and it's, it's pretty much stuck there unless you're using some kind of, uh, you know, slow drying agent, like a retardant or something like that. Yeah. So, um, you know, yeah. but, uh, I guess, you know, to answer your question, I'd kind of, I like doing a little bit of everything. I get bored if I get trapped in one medium, you know, like this painting behind me is my second palette knife painting. I just wanted to try palette knife. Uh, I, I follow a couple artists who do great things with it and I just wanted to see if I would like it and I absolutely hate it. Yeah. So <laughs> that might be, yeah, that might be the last one behind me. Uh, I think with uh, watercolors, I did a handful of really nice watercolors a couple years ago and I don't know if I'll ever go back to it. You know, I always say that, but eventually I do go back to it to reassure myself how much I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, so. <laughs> just to remind yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. And um, what you said there as well, though, uh, was gold, I think, when you were talking about uh, realism and using realism as a tool to learn the, uh, the, 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 the application of color theory, learn the application of texture and or form, you know, et cetera, all that kind of thing. I think that's, um, gosh, controversial a little bit, but I think that's a, a rut some tattoo artists can get stuck in, you know. Um, you, you become a tattoo artist and you can, you, can pay the, you can pay your rent and bills, et cetera, just by doing realism. But to a certain degree, I felt uh, like it was just humph, you know, you don't get much from it. Well, you do get something from it. It's a really weird way to try and vocalize this. But after a certain period of time, I don't know. I feel like you, that is a tool to learn how to get all the things like you were talking about. And we, I just said then to create your own art, to start distorting right. like you were saying. And that right. is gold. And I think a lot of tattoo artists just are happy being comfy. They're homeostasis. They will just, um, and there's nothing wrong with this. I'm not saying uh, there's probably people like, oh, there's probably me that's like that or something. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just what you want from being an artist. You know, you have this Absolutely. job, you know? Absolutely. And I, I don't ever want to downplay it. Like, I think that, you know, doing realism is one of the most uh, monetarily generating uh, avenues to go down. Like, everyone wants realism. Like, anyone who can't draw they see something realistic and they think that's the top of the chart. So it's always going to be, you know, what's going to, in my opinion, what sells the most. Um, you know, when you see something that's a little more goofy and people just think it's like dumb cartoons and they don't realize that it actually takes a bit more thinking to come up with that. Um, but, you know, it, I think different strokes for different folks. Uh, some people will take realism and do it so fucking immaculately that I look at it and I'm like, wow, I would never spend that much time to make a photo, but that's fucking crazy you did. Like, good on you, man. Oh, I will not even compete with you. I'll just take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. for sure. The, I mean, man, the, 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 our industry, if we're talking about a tattooing medium, is saturated with absolutely incredible portrait artists that obviously, oh, or, yeah. or realism artists, not to a certain degree, you know, like, um, you know, uh, and when you, when you see them, because there's, because like you said, there's, there's levels, but when you see the top level and it, it's like, it's just breathtaking, you know, one of my all time favorites, really my all time favorite would be uh, Dimitri Samoin. Like I've always, from the moment I saw that guy's work to like right now, I don't know, but every time I see his work, I'm always just like, what the fuck, you know, like how is he yeah, doing this? It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. 
there's a few guys out there. I think, you know, I think when you get to those higher levels, it's how much you want to do with a liner. Um, like on my paintings, I try to find a focal point. Like I only use the liners or I guess with all of my stuff, I try to only get that, those small details and the last little bit of focal point to where some of those guys like Dimitri's stuff, he's using that stuff a lot of the way through it or very small mags to where you have like this immense amount of detail throughout the whole thing. Um, which I think is fucking awesome. And actually, I don't know if you've noticed lately, but he's been doing a bit of like new school and like kind of new schooly Japanesey yeah. stuff, which I'm like, hell yeah, dude, look at this guy using everything. <laughs> so I always, I love seeing people can, I mean, I guess it's like, you know, what I strive to kind of do is seeing people who are proficient with a lot of different styles and stuff like that. It's always yeah. interesting because it's like, you know, some of these people, you see them just doing the same, like, you know, same kind of imagery every time. And it's cool because you're like, I know exactly who did that. But after a while, I'm just like, okay, like, get it out of my feet. Like, I'm ready for the next thing. For some people, you're just like, everything they do, you're like, what the fuck, man? Like, yeah, <laughs> is there anything you don't do? Like, you jerk. <laughs> like, I'm trying so hard over here. Yeah, but but we need that. But the, everyone needs that. Everyone needs it, regardless. And there there is always. You, we we will talk about uh, uh, someone who's. Um, I mean, yourself. You're incredible uh, as an artist. You know, like. And then there's always levels to 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 it. So no matter what, there's always something for the person at the top. You know, like Nico Atedo or, or or people that are like considered like the top of the top by like people outside of the industry. When they see right. other people, or, or even Nico might be like, you don't know me, like, you don't know this guy, and you don't know this guy. This always levels up for people to look up to, and that's what Absolutely. people need. Yeah. And I think there's so many people that are, like, low-key. Like, me, I, I'm going to be honest, I, I don't really do social media as much as, like, some of these guys. Like, I see people are just posting old stuff, just going, and I watch their following, just building. I'm like, man, that would be really cool if I tried harder and cared that much. But I don't, man. And there's so many people who, like, care even less than me whose skill level is way beyond mine that I, like, show people. I'm like, yo, look at this guy. He's got, like, 2,000 followers, and he should be, like, at a million. He's insane. And it's, yeah. I don't know. I think that's kind of cool, too, you know, keeping the underground lit. Uh, you know, I do think there is a bit of import importance to social media, which keeps me doing it. Uh, you know, trying to build a fan base and making your online presence known so you have uh, pretty much income for whatever. Like, I mean, if I was on unemployment right now, I could be, you know, selling prints <laughs> and stuff online and gen generating some kind of revenue, which I honestly hate doing that stuff. Like, I usually, you know, I like doing conventions because I can sell all my merch in person and kind of see who's buying my stuff, you know, um, to where if I wanted to have like an online store, which eventually I will get there, but right now I'm young. I still have some fight in me. I think when I'm older and I don't feel like doing conventions as much, I'll probably like do an online store and just visit the post office, mail shit off, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, there's so many low brow people that, you know, you don't really hear about that are some of the best, uh, yeah. which is fucking crazy. Yeah, and then, like you said, social media bring without social media, they would not be put in front of your face. You know, unless you're at a convention, right. but it's nine times out of ten at social media, you'll see something and it's almost beyond belief. You're almost like, that's not real, is it? You know, and then you'll go right. onto their profile. There is risk nowadays of people doctoring images, but to a certain degree, there's people out there that you've never even heard of. They've got barely any followers like you were talking about and they're just ridiculous and you have no idea right. how this person is unheard of. And then that's when you realize that this is such a small but massive planet full of fucking amazing humans. I mean, since I started doing this podcast and before, before that, you know, like, um, this has made me aware of how many amazing people are out there. And not only that, that what the, 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 they are smashing it to a certain degree and they make you feel, I think regardless, they make you feel lazy, but I think that's what everyone will think. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, you know, I'm not doing enough or, you know, uh, but you know, you're doing as much as you can do, you know, to live a good life. You know, you can't constantly be paying exactly all hours of the day. You know, you've got hobbies, you've got things you need to do, but what's your, what would you say is your, 
Uh, favorite medium? I know that's a proper shit and hard question, but what would you say, man? Would you say tattooing is your favorite medium? Um, man, that's hard. Uh, I would have to say I do love tattooing because it it's the people aspect of it. It's the most interesting to me. It's the most I can focus on it the longest. But uh, if I had to choose one thing that I could love the most, it would be oils. Just because the the amount of vibrancy and you know with tattooing like I love tattooing and we all know about longevity, uh, but no piece will ever look as good as the day after it's done. Yeah. So you kind of watch you work really hard on these pieces that are like you know some of my best work was in tattoo form, and you see it six seven years later and you're like oh that that's cool. You know, but the day after it was done, you're like, fuck, I did this. This is crazy to where, yeah. you know, a painting like these things will be gone long after or be around long after I'm gone. And they'll, you know, for the most part, as long as they're treated properly and, uh, you know, have a good varnish to them, they'll hold their colors and things like that. Um, but I, I do got to say, I love the way oil moves. And a lot of that relates to skin. Um so when you're tattooing, you'll notice there's like an ugly stage. You, you try and hit the skin real hard and it gets all lumpy and it looks like it's fucking pissed and you went over it too much. And then you're like, ah, oh, fuck, did I go over it too much? I don't know, but it's patchy. I'm going to hit it again, see what happens. And then it starts looking real smooth. And I, I kind of relate that to oil. It's like wet on wet. You got to put that first layer down before you can get that smoothness to it. Yes. Um, and, you know, with tattooing, it takes a bit of experience uh, to kind of know where your balance point is of going over it too much. With me, I try to hit it as hard as I can right out the gate with as much pigment as possible. Uh, so that way, if it does need a second pass, I didn't go over it 15 times. I hit it once and maybe twice, three times with just the highlights would be the third pass. And then I leave it the fuck alone and... You know, a lot of my friends use the Saniderm, second skin, things of this nature. I am old school, dude. I tell my clients to dry heal because I've experienced a lot of bad heals with that stuff. And with my tattoos, I don't know why, with the amount of detail, I'm, I look at it when they're leaving. I'm like, yeah, that's going to heal like shit. <laughs> and then they see pictures in three days where it's healed and peeled. And they're like, dude, I've never had a tattoo heal like this. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but it fucking works so 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 just so what you're saying is you literally just advise them to just uh for anyone listening to just leave it alone do you, do you tell them to clean it etc and all that kind of thing yeah i mean i wash it down real good when it's done and then, and then i wrap it about uh wrap it up with a bit of clean film and tell yeah. them to leave it on until the next day and then wash it off real good in the morning and then do nothing to it for like two days so basically you let that scab layer kind of form before you start putting any kind of lotion on it. Cause that stuff will keep it too moist and like make it susceptible to bacteria. Once it's got that scab layer, man, it's protected from the outside world. Your body knows what to do a little bit of like vitamin E oil or some fragrance free lotion, you know, all the tattoo bombs and stuff are good. Some of them can be a little thick. So I usually tell people, you know, if you're going to use that stuff, use just the littlest bit, man, you know, your body knows what it's doing. Um, what I've been seeing the best results with, and, uh, one of my roommates has been using it on her stuff is vitamin E oil because there's literally nothing to it and it absorbs in really easy. Like it doesn't sit on the surface. It actually gets sucked up okay. and it's super thin. So it's like, it evaporates really fast and you can't really overdo it that easy, you know? Right. Um, yeah. But it's what's been working for me. And, uh, you know, I've tried the Saniderm second skin, things like this. And what I've seen happen with some people is, you know, they can't keep it on as long as they're supposed to. And once it takes, once it comes off, it's like you're back to square one, but you're now three days in. Yeah. So your body is now even more susceptible to infection and things like this. And I'm like, dude, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That being said, my lady uses that shit. And when I tattoo her and she uses it, her stuff heals like insanely fast and perfect. And I'm like, it works for you. Good for you. So, you know, sometimes I have a bit of dialogue with my clients. If they know how to use that stuff, I'm like, I'm going to wrap you with plastic wrap. You put that shit on yourself. Like I'm not a part of this. So, yeah, I think you're right there. I think to a certain degree, you know, if you have 
This is the hardest thing. I think it's it, one of the hardest, you know, with your painting behind you, no matter what, you're in charge of that and you're in charge of looking after it. And if it's just kept there and nobody comes over and spells, spills something ridiculous on it or, you know, like does something stupid, it's fine. It's going to stay exactly like that. The hardest thing about tattoos is they're done. You've taken all the care you can. You've given, you know, you've, you've prepped the skin before, you've cleaned it, you've done the tattoo, you've kept it as clean as you can, um, and then you then you finish it, clean it off, wrap it up, and then that is all you can do to that little baby. That is it. That is, you, you know, it's completely up to the person that has it uh, to not do something silly. You know, um, you've probably had customers before, or, you know, and they'll, they'll tell you, like, oh, I've you know, they've got a ridiculous job, like they work in a factory with like, or they work, they're a car mechanic and you've done their arm or something like that. And it's like, hey man, listen, hey, right. that's your choice. Like, I, I, all I can say is I would do this, but you're, you know, and that, but then sometimes there's been times of, I've been tattooing for 13 years. There's been a few times where, um, I, I think a guy was a welder and we did like a, a, a sleeve um, based on Ayrton Center and, and all over the portrait, like that there were spats of um i can't remember whatever it was um was coming back onto the to the tattoo and it kept it scarred it so there were spots of scars all over the tattoo so like all over the portrait was just like little oh, yeah. divots of just blank skin i was like what dude what the fuck have you done you know I, I, what's happened you know and he's just like oh yeah uh i just i was welding and uh, and he just blaz like blazingly was just like yeah that's what happened i was like oh, okay yeah. you know i mean so that's that's kind of why going from, you know, tattoos being my favorite medium, realistically, it, my favorite medium is oil. Right. Because, yeah. you know, it, you don't have to worry about aging. But I tell my clients, I'm like, it's really up to you because I get my picture when it's done. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of my clients who are getting sleeves from me and stuff, they understand and they take great care of it. And I always express to them, you know, and anyone who knows me sees me out fishing and I'll be in a hundred degree weather Fahrenheit and uh, I'll be wearing a full hoodie like this <laughs> and, you know, fishing with my hand in my sleeve, like protecting, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. protecting my stuff. And I tell my clients, I'm like, if you, you know, you're paying all this money, do the same. If not, like when you show up, I'm going to charge you to go over the whole thing again. Like, touch-ups are if it's something I did if you like abuse your tattoo that's your fault that's like you know getting tattooed and then going and getting lasered and been like hey it faded I'm like no you did that yeah like, that was <laughs> like you knew what a laser would do I'm telling you what the sun will do and this is you know what slag from fucking welding getting on your arms gonna do yeah uh, and you know back to that I grew up in southern California where it's always hot as hell the sun's shining and I actually, I'm glad I moved out of there. This is why I know how to do black and gray so well. Uh, you know, you got people who are just sun worshipers. And I'm like, if you like being in the sun, just get black and gray. Yeah. You know, it'll, it'll age and fade, but it does it uniform and it's fine. With color, you get a tan dude, all of your bright highlights and like yellow is going to disappear, orange is going to disappear. Uh, and everything's going to turn like piss yellow. Like, you know, don't, don't get color. Uh, but when I was living out there, I would get people who come in like, hey, bro, my tattoo healed shitty, man. And I'm like, yo, what the hell did you do to it? And they're like, nothing. I did what you told me. And their friend's like, bro, you went swimming in the lake ne the next day. I'm like, yo, that is not a lake. That is a toilet filled with boats. Like, yeah, yeah that's, that's called an infection. You got an infection because there's poo-poo in that water and it got in your tattoo. <laughs> so, you know. But I, I just tell my clients, I don't harp on them. I give them the facts. I let them know, yo, the sun's going to destroy it. Are you a sun person? Are you not? You know, I think just having a bit of dialogue with people beforehand uh, usually solves those problems. And if they do work a job, like they're a mechanic, they're going to get grease on it. I'm like, hey, well, you know what's going to happen. We'll see how it goes. Like, you know, I, maybe I won't tattoo you for an eight-hour session. I'm going to do a three-and-a-half-hour session. So that way it's less trauma. Maybe it'll heal better. I don't care. You know what I mean? Like I, I want your shit to heal good, but here's the situation. Yeah, totally. Um, and also I think in some of those cases, like uh, I will recommend some of those uh, derm type uh, healing things. Like if, you know, I'm tattooing someone's foot and they're like, yo, I work a job where I have to wear shoes and there's no way out of it. I'm like, all right, well, we'll try putting this shit on. We'll see what happens. You know, if it heals fucked up, like, 
we'll go over it again. You know, most of my clients are repeat clients. So I'm going to keep seeing you, you know, like even if it heals good, I'm probably going to want to go over it again because I like layering shit. That's just how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Man. Yeah. I've even had people just so like, <laughs> I, I love it, man. I, I even have people, uh, and it happens quite regularly, like just saying like, oh yeah. And they'll just tell you what they did wrong. You know what I mean? Like, um, right. you know, if, if something's like faded a little bit or there's a, a line just gone or whatever, uh, they, and you'd be like, oh, sir, this looking cool, man. What, what, what's happened here? And they're just like, oh, yeah, well, straight away I went on a run and my shorts were uh, were rubbing on it. So, like, yeah, it didn't heal too good on that bit there. But I'm like, right, okay, right, what the fuck? Okay, no worries. But you just, this is the thing, man. You let them go, and as soon as they're out the door, it's out of your control. And as long as you get a yeah. good, enough, good enough picture and, um, you know, that's, that's all you can do. It's, it's, a, it's a tough gig at times, man. I don't know. With As far as mediums, though, like, you seem to be, like, super versatile over uh, loads of different mediums. Like, um, but would you think, I, I will try to articulate, I'll try to ask this question. Do you think that tattooing, because I don't think you weren't a painter before you was a tattooer, right? Yeah, no, no. I didn't really get into painting until, like, three years in. So do you think that tattooing and then painting, and then everything else after, uh, after it just completely helps everything all together. You know, like, because if you, if you can be a good tattoo artist and learn how to apply, you know, lines and, and learn uh, contrast and value and, and, then, and then color theory to a certain degree, and then you start learning how to paint, and then after a certain period of time, you start moving on to gouache and uh, maybe digital art and all this kind of stuff. Do you think it all lends into itself eventually? I, I absolutely do. Um, you know, all, everything has been circulatory, uh, into this industry. That's why coming in, I realized, you know, as a tattooer, I'm an artist. I have to, you know, I have to figure out how to be an artist in every kind of way. And, you know, I felt like it was too dangerous to learn color theory on skin. Like I just had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea how to make an earth tone. I didn't even know what an earth tone versus a bright tone was. I mean, I guess subliminally I could see them, but I didn't know what the difference was. Um, yeah. And now like it's all so relative and a lot of people see the way I tattoo and they think, you know, I don't think it's weird because when I paint, I use like three colors, you know, I use a, uh, blue, red, and yellow, and then I'll have white, so four colors. And when I tattoo, I have maybe three times that amount, which, you know, usually my palette's about eight ink caps for yeah. any kind of tattoo I'm working on. And a lot of people find that strange, but that's just how I learned how to develop color. Um, and I think it's very important to learn multi-mediums uh, because they all relate. Like every medium you learn has some kind of application to the others. And you see how they, they kind of come across each other and each one has its advantages. Um, uh, and where I would go from here is I've actually seen people who are phenomenal artists, like caricature artists or like painters, and then they try to get into tattooing and something happens where you're just like, what happened here? Like you were, you're such an amazing artist, but you got into tattooing and your tattooing's fucking awful. It's where I'm kind of thankful I got into tattooing first. Uh, I'm not saying it's the right way. And it's, I would say it's harder to do it that way because usually you see someone who's an artist, they have a portfolio of art where you're just like, these are incredible. Of course this will translate. And then you bring them in and you're just like, man, this isn't working out. So where me, I, I got, you know, the guy I worked for got lucky that I was actually capable of figuring this shit out, even though I had no, like, like if I had seen my portfolio, I wouldn't have given me the job to be honest, but it was a little shop in the hood. That was like, you know, there was no talent around for miles. So even my meager sketches were fine. Um, but I, I do think that all mediums, uh, translate to other mediums. So, for me, it's really kind of fun to search through all of these and see what I like about each one and see what, you know, I can apply back into tattooing because that is my main source of income. Uh, 
And I encourage other artists, like, do the same. Like, if you try watercolor and it frustrates you and you hate it, get rid of that shit. Try something. Else. Don't get rid of it. Put it in a box. Put it to the side. Grab some wash. Try that. I mean, it's, it's you know, and take those steps to where don't just go from, like, you know, pen to oil painting. Not saying you can't do that. But, like, you know, for me, I went in steps. I went color pencil, acrylic, oil, then to watercolor, then to gouache, uh, you know, but I think there's other steps, you know, you can do it in different ways that work for you. So that way, when you make mistakes, say you're going from watercolor to gouache, when you make mistakes in watercolor and you get frustrated and you put it away and then you try gouache, you can kind of relate those mistakes with watercolor into your gouache and maybe you won't hate your gouache as much. And then when you go to oil from gouache, you learned from the gouache. So honestly, I think get out there and make mistakes because that's how we all learn. Yeah, man. Dude, you, I, I love how passionate you are, man. You love our I come wild art. I fucking love it. And I think uh, before I was do, about to do this, I knew that I was going to be inspired by you doing this. But <clears throat> you're right with that. I think it's so weird how... <sighs> I don't even fucking know how, how, what goes on, but they can be such an accomplished artist. I've got a person that I want to say, but I'm not going to say him, but uh, they're so accomplished, like ridiculously accomplished. You look at their work, what they've been doing for the past 20 years and you're like fucking ridiculous. They've got books out, they've got everything. They're, they're so accomplished. And then they'll pick a tattoo machine up and they can be five years into their career and they're still dog shit. And they still, they still cannot seem to grasp the idea of, tattooing and uh because you know like tattooing is literally you're just learning how to it's like a joiner you can learn to be a joiner and and how to dovetail and all this kind of stuff but can you be artistic can you can you can, you know that, that's when the levels start to go up this will you will get paid so much for this but then when you start getting artistic with joinery you earn more money with it etc you know so like if somebody's proficient in one like skill as an artist and we're talking about artists here i said joinery there but proficient in one medium and then they go to another i have no idea why and it, and it happens i see it. it they just can't seem to grasp it it's such a conundrum i have fucking no idea yeah i've i've seen it so many times with people personally coming into my life with people on the internet who have these giant followings for art and then yeah you see them like tattoo and you're just like what and then, you know, you see other things where people are fantastic at all of it and they hit this point and then stop caring because they have a huge following. And you're just like, I don't ever want to be someone like that. Uh, in fact, you know, I try to surround my pe myself with people who uh, are continuously inspiring. A good friend of mine, uh, Ron Earhart, he's done some beautiful tattoos on me. The dude's been tattooing for like over 30 years or something stupid like that. And his shit is still getting better. In fact, I've seen like someone come into his studio who had tattoos that were like 20 years old on him from him. And he reworked them. And it was like a collaboration with him and younger him. And it somehow was like Voltron. Like it was more powerful than both. It was crazy. I was like, yo, I hope that one day I can rework my old tattoos and it's better than what I'm doing and what I've done, you know, not to say what he's doing now is not fantastic. It was just, it made him alter his style just a little bit to where it was like crazy, I guess, because I'd never seen anything like that. Yeah, man. I, I have to agree, man. And he's just done some lockdown paintings that are like a just black and black, gray and white, weren't they? They, they, they? And they were unbelievable. And like you say, I think it's so hard to, and you just hope that you still have that bite and that, that, that passion and it keeps going and going and going and that, and that want and need to, well, it's not even a need. It's just that want uh, and to get better and progress as an artist. And you just, you just hope and pray that it just doesn't fizzle out. I, I don't think, and you definitely, you're such a good human, I, I definitely don't think you will ever uh, get to a point where you're like, oh, sweet man, I have made it. And people think I am really, really good. So I'm just going to take my foot off the pedal. I don't see that in your work. I see a constant progression. Um, uh, you know, and I just don't think that will happen. But it does happen. I, I think you see it, you see it with people and they, 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 they get to a certain point and they just have nothing left. Uh, 
you know, I was talking to Marcus about just that kind of thing. And it was, it's just weird how he's like, he's got to, <laughs> you know, what Marcus is like, he's like, I got to a, you know, he's like, I got to a point where I've got to a point now where I've got my style and everything. And the thing is with bio, it's so difficult to like, um, like it's, there's so many styles have, have reached uh, to, to a certain point. It's, it's, it's very interesting to try and create something different, you know, with it now, yeah. not looking like somebody else's work. Um, so he's like, I'm done with that now. And I'm just going to wait for a bit. And I know the people who are uh, taking my shit and then I'm just going to eventually wait until they do something cool. And I'm going to steal their shit. But Marcus is so tactful and he's such an amazing artist that he's not going to, you know, he will carry on oh, doing what he's you know. He's so scientifically minded. It's like yeah. incredible. I, I love talking to him because he's he's very uh, German in that way to where he's just like technical, like to the extreme. And it's it's awesome. But back to the whole bio thing, like trying to, sh you know, I've with my stuff, I it, I emulate, you know, I, I find people inspire me and I try to, you know, do things similar to what they got going on. So like with bio, I've done like so many different styles and I can't do that stuff all the time. And it, it bores me. I get bored because I get stuck in this rut and all my shit starts looking the same. And, you know, I'm like, I, you know, I, I try to only take on one new bio project a year, uh, because it keeps me fresh. You know, it's good for my clients. So their stuff doesn't look like another one of my clients. Um, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that. I think, you know, there's a few artists out there like Ron and Guy and Marcus where they can keep doing their styles over and over. And I don't think it matters because they are the innovators for that style. You know what I mean? Where when I do bio, I see Guy's stuff. I see Mike Marcus's stuff in my work. I see a lot of Ron's stuff in my work. And I'm just like, I can't not see their stuff in my work. And I'm like, I'm not innovating here. So it's boring to me. Uh, I do have a massive love for bio to where I want to do it every once in a while. But I don't think that that field has a voice of my own. Um, and I don't know how I would come up with that. And I don't think I have enough drive to get into that field and make a footprint of my own, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, well said, man. But, I think it's I um, think it's hard. I'm definitely a bio supporter, though. Don't get me wrong. I love the shit. Oh, man. I it, don't I, think... You can't... Sorry, man. You, you can't not be. I think... Uh, I, I think bio uh bio organic mainly and uh, mechanics is, is amazing as well but generally bio organic when, when you see it it's just it for me it's like art it's tattoo art like uh, if it, if there was you know you've got like realism etc like but bio for me is like when people ask what is it it doesn't need to be answered it just it fits the arm it flows with the arm and it looks fucking stunning you know and that's all you need to know and for me it's like um a more detailed, intricate, amazing version of tribal, you know, to, to a certain degree. I know it's right. really, really horrible to say that, but like, it no, just no, is. I love that. I love that because anyone who's a bio artist knows that it's just like new school tribal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but it's, it's great because it, for me, my love for it is because of like, you're saying it's so fucking artistic. You have like variation in line weight or like, hidden lines depth of field you have soft lines like hard lines uh luminosity and glow you have different textures as far as like sometimes things are porous or like gritty or shiny and sheen and picking up light from other things like it when someone asks what is bio it is everything in my yeah. opinion that's all you need to know it's everything yeah and you you just make of it what you it is what it is, man. Like, it, it, you know, like... It's but up to I, interpretation. And that's yeah. what art is. It's for you to interpret and get the feelings you want from it. If you yeah. think it's dumb, it's not for you. Yeah. If, and if you think you're, it's dumb, you're probably into more portraiture. Not a bad thing. It's just preference. Yeah, that's the best thing about, like, uh, uh, humans to a certain degree. You know, like, we, we... Everybody's so different. With absolutely everything in their life, you know, like diet or like hobbies or like you know sexual preference all of the things that you could ever think of every single human is different so they will see everything completely different no matter what like 
and, and art is exactly the same as that. You could, I could really love something and be like, dude, Matt, Matt, you need to come and see this. And, 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 I, and I bring you over and you're like, yeah, what, sorry, man, what is it? And in the back of your head, you're like, oh, it's a piece of shit. I, what does he mean, you know? I, 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 but, it, but to right. me, it's like, fuck, you know? But then there's certain things I think to an artist is just undeniable, you know, like right. you can look right. at something like, um, I don't again, I was going to say Boris Villaggio, then I was going to be like, somebody can look at a Boris Villaggio painting and be like, dude, that is incredible. But then again, there'll be people out there like, I don't like that. I don't like that kind of stuff. Right. Right. It's, it's, you know, I think that's the beauty of it, man. I think, you know, diversity is the secret yes. uh, for me. And that's, I guess why I, emulate and create in so many different styles and forms. It's just, I love diversity. I love diversity in art. I love biodiversity. That's why I love fishing is just getting to check out all these different species and they have all these different, you know, uh, light, uh, like uh, iridescence on them and stuff. And I just, I love seeing humans who have unique features like, you know, uh, my lady, for example, Jess Brown, she's such a unique looking person. She doesn't look like anyone else. And she's almost like, uh, you know, racially anonymous. You could almost be like, where is she from? I mean, she looks kind of like mostly Italian. She's Italian, but her skin's very olive. Like she almost looks like Russian or like, you don't know if she's like mixed race. Like she's cool looking. And I just, I love like seeing people who are unique. I love when people have like really heavy freckles or like those kind of white spots on them. And, you know, I'm into reptiles. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I just love patterns. I, you know, I guess I, that's why I love tattooing is like, it's almost like creating reptilian like colors on yourself. We get to pick our patterns and kind of express ourselves on, you know, whether like, I love green. So I have a ton of green, purple, and orange on me. Those are my favorite colors. And it's like, I get to express that this is what I am. I love green. I love purple. And I want to be these unique colors because unfortunately I was put in this body and I wanted to be in a green suit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, I fucking love this shit. And I, I would assume my lady's into green because I'm covered in this shit. So she must like it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like like you were saying as well, like what you just alluded to and talked about there is another version of everybody's different, you know, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. There's so many different sayings and uh, out there that, that, that are just so true. You know, they were invented for a reason, but it's true. It's just a diverse way of looking at things. So you, somebody can look at somebody and be like, dude, she's beautiful. And then another person can be like, She's not for me, you know, and all that kind right. of thing. It's right. so, it's so incredible the way we do, you know, the way humans see certain things. Like you're talking about fish, then you can, you can have two different kinds of fish. You can be fishing and two different kinds of fish come in from the same lake or, or you can be sea fishing from the sea, you know, and, and you can, they can have different scale formations and look completely different, but they're in the same place. It's just like us, so apt for what's happening right now. It's just like us, it's just diversity everywhere we're all one we're all from the same planet but like every other planet out there in the universe there'll be so much diversity we can't even comprehend it you know i think that's the thing about well I'm so deep but i think that's the thing about the universe man there's like uh and any other universes that are out there there is that life comes in so many different forms and we we find beauty in all of it. You know, I think like to a certain degree, humans will find find beauty in all of the life that's on this planet. And and I think it'll probably just repeat itself all over like different universes. But I, I don't know, man. I, that's getting deep. But I, right. I like what you were talking about, them. I like what you were I talking about. It. Yeah, man. I like it. And but what I'm gonna say as well, like your diversity, you can see it in your work. Like you are. You said it before, and I'm going to say it to you, and you're going to be like, yeah, like, because sometimes people might say it to me, oh, you, you know, you do this and you do that. You're, for me, a world-class all-rounder. Uh, like, for me, I look at you, you you will do realism, and it'll be a high level. You'll do, like, a neo-traditional tattoo, high level. A script tattoo, high level. A bio tattoo, high level. You'll do, like, something illustrative and, and fucking girly or whatever, high level. But it's got your stamp on it, like this graffiti-ish type you know, bold as hell, you know, intense. And I, and I love that about how diverse your work is, you know, because you can look behind you and there's something hyper-realistic, but not because it's like, it's, 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 um, it's got a little bit of 
craziness going on with the color choices, etc. And you've got an orb in the eye of the skull. But to a certain degree as well, you 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 have mastered that. And I I think that right. My, my opinion to anyone that's listening, I think that's the key to being an accomplished artist. You have to be able to be diverse. It, to, for me, for me, I mean, some people might listen to be like, I don't believe that. I think, you know, you can be a proficient this. And, no, for me, what I like to see is from, a diff, from an artist is, is diversity. And you've got that, man. Is it like always been something that you wanted to pursue? You know, like script, you know, like you'll do script and you'll just smash it, man. Nine times out of 10, sorry to keep blabbing on, but nine times out of 10, you know, sometimes people come to me and I love, I love seeing script, you know, and, 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 and how it can fit the body and et cetera. And there's some incredible people that do it. And I'll be like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And I might push somebody somewhere else to get it from somewhere else. And then I'll take some on and I absolutely love the challenge. Is it the same for you? Do you just like challenges? Uh, I, I do very much so. Uh, I think, you know, anything that's, easy for me is just, you know, it's boring. And that's why I kind of keep doing different styles is because I'm like, what if, what if I want to try this? I don't know. Am I going to be good at it? And I guess the pressure of like me not knowing what I'm doing makes me try harder and keeps my edge up there. But what I will say is there is a downside to it. Um, when I'm constantly trying to figure out new things, uh, it's like I'm not mastering any of them. Um, I see people who do, you know, take, go back to realism. I see people who I see the realism stuff and I'm just, I'm like, I don't think I would ever have the patience to do that. And it kind of bums me out because I'm like, I want to be the best at everything, but when it comes down to it, you got to have the love for it. And I think where my love lies is diversity. Um, so you know, when people keep coming to me, you know, years ago, I started doing dinosaurs. I wanted to, you know, I love reptiles. I love, you know, just the fact that there's so little known about dinosaurs. They could have had crazy colors, patterns, you know, uh, and then I started putting weaponry on them and jet packs and making them <laughs> super weird and having graffiti going on. Uh, but then as people kept coming to me for dinosaurs, I realized that everyone only wants a raptor or a T-Rex. And there's not that there's anything wrong with that. I just started losing the diversity in what I loved. You know, I could only recreate so many T-Rexes and I still will take them on from time to time. I actually have a couple of them that are on my books as soon as I'm back to work. Uh, but it's like the bio thing, you know, I can only do a couple of them a year because I know they're going to be T-Rexes or Raptors. So I got to keep that shit to a minimum so I can keep recreating something new that I haven't done before. Cause if I'm just doing them 24 seven, it's, I lose that love for it and I can't keep my quality up there. Yeah. And that's where the benefit comes in where right. you are, you can make your own decision, you know, like, uh, like it's, it's commissioned work, you know, like somebody comes in and they're like, dude, I love your work. And I saw the dinosaurs you did and you've, like you said, you've already got two or three on the books and you're like, Oh mate, Maybe if you want me to do that, come back in a year or so. I can do something else if you want. But creatively, I am pooped with it, you know, like, because there is right. only a certain amount of ways you can reimagine something. That's why, like, I think it's hard to be, a, uh, we talk back again, a bio artist. It's, it, you know, I, I mean, okay, for example, like Guy Aitchison, he seems, he's still fucking knocking it out of the park. He's still knocking it out. But he was, you know, I watched a... Uh, um, the other day I went on a YouTube rabbit hole and watched Tattoo Wars and there was Aaron Kane and, um, and Guy Edgerson and they, he was still doing things, he's still doing things that are so similar but way different and more advanced obviously but still so similar and it's so weird how you can keep recreating in that style I, I, I don't have the mental capacity to do that it's bananas. And you know, it's weird because out of all things, bio is so limitless, but for some reason becomes so uh, streamlined at a point, you know, like it literally has no rules or regulations, but when you start doing it, it just, you kind of program these rules in your head to where your stuff starts looking very similar all the time. And, you know, I feel like people, you know, like 
Ron, a lot of his forms are very similar, but he's always switching up the colors. So he's got these crazy color schemes always shifting and changing, you know, and you can definitely see where he's figured out which ones work on darker skin tones and what, you know, where he can go a little crazier, more neon with stuff. And then, you know, Guy, his forms are always changing. His color palettes are always very similar, but he's always coming up with these super weird, like fractally things shoved in holes behind different objects that are just, you know, his forms are changing. So, um, you know, and then Marcus, you know, he changes everything every time. He changes his form, he changes his color schemes, his structure, you know, he's, you can see where he's basing them off of some kind of object or like, you know, he'll, he'll do some birch mech and then he'll do some yeah. lava mech and then some like jewelry mech, you know, it's, it's cool that he has themes for his stuff, which, you know, there's been a few things that I've done like that. I did a, a witch blade based uh, sleeve on my buddy Patrick a while back. That was pretty cool. Um, I posted a little bit about it here and there. Yeah. A lot of people don't know it's like based off Witchblade because the outside just looks like this kind of uh, green reptilian mechy stuff or bio stuff. And then the inside, he's got this beautiful woman's face that goes right into it and her hair is kind of intertwined with everything. That's, you know, it was super fun to kind of have a theme. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and, and like you were saying, that's cool, man. Like you were saying as well, but, you know, I think what you were, you were talking with Marcus and I think everyone does, you end up being inspired by other artists regardless. Like, I think it's hard not to be. I, I, I spoke right. to him about this as well. It's just, it's just really hard not to, you know, I think um, let's just take something simple like a skull, you know, you can, you can have drawn a skull. How long have you been tattooing, man? How long have you been tattooing? Uh, 14 years. Yeah, okay, so so say 10 years ago or something like that, the way you draw a skull is different to the way you draw a skull now. So you know, I think I'm not asking for a realistic skull of you. I'm asking for your version of just a fucking mad skull. Right. It cha it's changed, it changes over time because you will see and you pick up just in a, in like without even trying to, you'll be like, dude, that's sick. I like how they extend the cheekbone out here or they fucking, I like how they just oh, yeah. like, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And it, I don't know, as an artist, I think you've got to allow yourself to be inspired. There's a line, obviously, you know, but I think you've got to allow yourself to be inspired by other people because what you see, you like it and and you're going, it's going to come out of you in some way. So I think as an artist, you're just going to let it happen. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I would 100% agree, agree with that, man. I've been inspired by so many, you know, so I've changed in the last few years as we all, you know, go through these phases. But, you know, early on, I, I was, uh, I come from the tattoo magazine generation where, you know, every week I was at the liquor store next door to my shop, like looking through the magazines, like who's, like looking at all the new like Nico pieces and like uh, uh, Boris and yeah. you know all the crazy guys Ron and Marcus or I don't know I think Marcus was a little bit after the magazines or at least yeah. I didn't see them until after but uh, you see all these people in these magazines and you're waiting and I would just like try and emulate what I was seeing and you know it's like Legos you know you pick up little bits of pieces off other people so you can build the dopest spaceship. <laughs> and, um, you know, I definitely know that there's people out there and you can tell Marcus has a very open mind about this stuff. You know, there's people out there that are, you know, taking your style and trying to just like take it and use it. And some people get really mad. I've had a lot of people, you know, send me stuff where people are, you know, jacking my style or using it, almost doing tattoos verbatim. And, you know, a little bit of me, I'm like, man, like, you really just traced my stuff. But I'm like, whatever, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Maybe you're still learning. Um, you know, I obviously used to do that when I was still learning. I, I used to take a lot more uh, realism stuff. And I feel like with the realism guys, you see them using the same images off Google a lot of the time. And I think where it becomes more advanced than that is you start using your own photography for things like that. And I think having a sour mind about people ripping your stuff, it's kind of like the opposite of progression. I want people to take the things that work 
for me and I've like engineered through my style and borrowing things and take that and use it in their style so then they can come up with something even cooler and then like Marcus said I'll be like that's cooler than what I did yoink now yeah. I'm taking that and changing it back to my shit um, yeah. it's just it's part of progression you know I think keeping information to yourself is just bad for everything we should you know put information out there and you know even more so even if you think it's bad that people are stealing stuff for you know replicating your shit verbatim uh educate them don't like make them feel bad about them just let them know like hey maybe instead of copying this piece that i did verbatim you know like say the skull behind me i took a photograph and put lights on it like make your own reference like figure out how to be your own voice so you don't have to make it completely verbatim what someone else did uh, I don't think resembling other people's work is necessarily bad. You know, a lot of my bio looks like Ron shit because I've been tattooed by him for fucking almost a hundred hours. So it's like, it's in my blood now, literally, uh, I can't get away from it. It's just his stuff is what I like. So now when I do bio, it's like, I see his shit and my shit and I'm just like, ah, fuck, I want it to be different. So I'm, I have to then fight myself to like change it as much as I can. So it's not Ron stuff, but I love his stuff so much, man. It's like, you know, hopefully he sees my stuff and wants to peel a little bit back, yes. which he's actually uh, done. And like, you know, when he was designing my torso suit, he uh, even came up to me with a drawing like, Hey, do you want to draw like a snake tongue on this? And I was like, are, are we collabing on my shit? Like, yeah, I, mean, so I was like totally down. I thought it was so cool that he even asked me. Uh, Sweet. You know, not, not that I want to be a hot dog and wear my own work. I think that's a little strange, you know, but no. uh, it was just, it was cool that he wanted my input on the piece, even though I told him like, do whatever you think's cool. Yeah, man, that's wicked. I fucking love that. What a guy. What a what a, what a legend. Like he obviously clearly respects you as well. Like and that. Yeah, we're, I mean we're I, super close friends. He's he's awesome. We talk all the time. Dude, you spend that much time in agony with someone while they're putting you through what you went through. You cannot be friends. You know, you cannot not be friends. You know what I mean? Like you. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. I would say that goes back to why tattooing is my favorite medium because some of the people that I tattoo, you know, I think my style attracts the kind of people that vibe with me. So when I'm tattooing these people, like a lot of them just become like really good, close lifelong friends. And I'm just like, man, not a bad day ever goes by. Like I look at my calendar sometimes and I'm like, man, what am I working on today? My, my worst days are when I actually have to draw a full sleeve or like start a new project. Cause I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to like this person. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to draw today. Like what's going to happen here. And then when I see it's like someone I've tattooed for forever hours, I'm like, Oh dude, what are we get? I'll probably do a shot of tequila with them through the day, man, just to relax <laughs> and fucking chill out. Like it's going to be a good day. Yeah. So yeah. And that's I when think, you, uh, that's when you realize you've got a fucking amazing job where, you know, like for anybody that's listening is now, and now who's not a tattoo artist, that man, that, 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 when you, when you have uh, a group of people on your books that uh, have become close friends or friends to you and you can just work with them, you're not working, are you? You're just, you're just, you know, you've got together and you're doing this thing on them uh, and, it, and it doesn't feel like work, you know, and that's the best thing, man. I, I, I absolutely love that. It's fucking wicked. It's awesome. That's, that's probably one of the best parts about this job is just, meeting some really cool people. And, you know, in some ways, like I've, I've had clients, like, uh, for instance, I had this client and he was super rad and he was trans and he had a double mastectomy and he wanted to get this chest piece to kind of hide those scars and make him feel more of a person. And this guy was so fucking dope, dude. I did this piece and he let me know how much it meant to him. And like, it made me feel really good that I could make a positive change in his life in such a way. But I let him know he came up to me and uh, introduced his mom to me at a convention because he just was attending and saw me there and uh, was, and his mom was like, you have done so much for my son. And I let him know. I was like, dude, I, I did a tattoo for you, but you already had it. You didn't need that, but it made me feel good inside knowing that 
you know, even his mom would approach me and uh, let me know how much of a difference I made. That felt fucking dope. Yeah. Um, so aside from the friendships you build, being able to like, you know, being an artist, I'm like, I've always kind of felt depressed about it because I'm like, you know, I really want to make a difference in the world. And especially now with global situations, I feel like I don't have a place to say anything being my background, ethnicity, things like that. I need to just chill back and uh, just listen. Um, but with things like that, you know, I've always felt like our job is just pleasing people and it's kind of like not very globally, you know, we're not making a huge difference in the world, but having clients like that, where I get to make a small difference in someone's life, like that's pretty dope. And, uh, you know, I hope some of those people go on to do greater things than I ever could. And I've just made it a cool thing for them along the way. Yeah. Man, so beautiful put that. Yeah, is exactly right. You, you, the the relationships you form, the things you can do for people, uh, the barriers that you can break down for people. They can they can hate a body part, you know, and come to you for that healing that they don't even know. The, you don't even know what you're giving to them until after, and they could be so into what you did for them on that body part that they can wear. They they can get it out and they're not bothered anymore. Sometimes people will come and openly say that to you as well. They'll be like, I'm not happy with this. You know, oh, if yeah. some, you know, if someone's had a tummy tuck or someone's been pregnant uh, uh, and they've given birth, etc. You know, it, it, it's, it's good, man. I, it's definitely, it's definitely a rewarding job to that degree. I, I will agree with you. I, I wanted to talk to you about as well. Um, I think myself that like, one of the keys to being a good artist in general, I mean, obviously you have to learn color theory and that's the application of value, et cetera. But the framework for something is, is drawing. Like um, I think drawing is a massive key to being a good artist, like regardless. How, what are your thoughts on this? Because I've seen you over the years free and some amazing shit on people man like the confidence is 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 key there to be able to be like all right you come here i'm gonna prep your skin i'm gonna get these sharpies out and i'm gonna i'm gonna draw this on i I, you know do you think that 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 you've it's the hours you've put in flexing the muscle in a sense of drawing that has allowed you to be as confident as you are with freehanding yeah i i would 100 percent agree with that uh it's you know, it's time over everything. I definitely know artists who have picked freehanding up for me where I'm like, ah, maybe you should stick to drawing first. (laughs) You know, I think, uh, there definitely is a bit of confidence. You have to understand, you know, what your, you know, your application is more important than, uh, what your drawing looks like. So usually my drawings are not very in depth. It's a slight bit of information um, because for me, it takes all the fun out when I already know what the image is going to look like. So for me, a lot of the fun is kind of giving the rough draft and then being able to really intricately carve it out and make it cool and then color it because I have no idea what it looks like. If I, you know, this is where replication gets thrown out the window for me where I, you know, realism for me is not that much fun. It's because I already know what it's going to look like. There's no adventure there for me. Um, but where I kind of learned freehanding is I would practice with images that didn't necessarily have to be realistic. But in a lot of my drawings, I have like my phone has a bunch of references or uh, my iPad has a bunch of realism on it. Like I have Nat Geo photos. If I'm doing birds, I have like eight different pictures of the bird that I'm doing. One, I I like the wing. One, I like the foot. One, I like both feet. One, I like the color. One, I like the, the lighting in the background, you know? So I try to put all these things together so that I can take each part and draw it on. And where getting away from realism is awesome is when you can't draw something perfectly distorted, like like you can't get the proportions right, when you fuck it up, you can have fun with that. So if I make one, like, eyebrow too big, I'll fucking make it even bigger and make it look like he's, like, throwing a big-ass eye at you, like he's, like, checking out, like, you know? Uh, So you got you got to have a little fun with it, but I also think your ability has to be there. You have to understand you know, what 
the basic fundamentals of how to draw art if you're going to do those sort of things. Like, you know, I think what I think is important is if you can't take a piece of watercolor paper, do a drawing, paint over it, and have it look immaculate at the at the end of it without having any kind of pre drawn reference, you shouldn't freehand because it shows that your control is that not there to make a perfect uh, piece of art uh, from nothing. Right. Yeah. Um, so you, yeah, I you understand know. what you're saying. So you're saying without, if you could take a piece of watercolor paper and not lay a pencil drawing down first, you mean before you go in with a? No, a, no. You can lay a pencil drawing down first, but if you can't hide that by the end, then you shouldn't be freehanding. You know what I mean? Unless, yeah. you know, the pencil drawing can sometimes be part of it too. You know, a lot of people will leave that kind of stuff in there. you got to understand how to use your mistakes is basically what it comes down to. When I'm doing a drawing, uh, you know, my first drawing is not good, dude. I usually tell my clients, I'm like, do you like my work? They're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, it's going to look like that when it's done. But when you see the drawing, it's going to look like a little kid did it. Um, and you know, not all of my drawings are bad. Sometimes I'm on it. Like when I'm having a good day, I look at my drawing and I'm like, dude, let's just take a picture of this and say it was a good day. Cause I, <laughs> I did that. Yeah. Uh, but some days I'm like, you know, I get done with the drawing and I'm like, what am I fucking doing? Am I going to really tattoo this? And I got to talk to myself through this. I'm like, okay, let's pick the parts you can do. We'll do that. And then I'll draw on them again and try to fix once I get past that point. Um, you know, it's not always one, one go with things, you know, it's, you got to figure out how to work with your mistakes. And that's why I love bold lines. They're so fucking forgiving. It's when I have to bust out that one pass script with the fucking three liner that I'm freaking out because I'm like, yo, your tremor is going to show up in this shit. Yeah. But then when I fuck it up, I'm like calligraphy, second yeah. pass, the seven. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you got to learn how to make your mistakes beautiful. And I think a lot of, you know, what I love about drawing on is sometimes, you know, as my man Bob Ross would say, it's not a mistake. It's a happy little accident. Yeah. But sometimes I'll draw some shit like a little fucked up and I'm like, oh, shit, I, let's fuck this up. I like that shit. And I'll just go with it and make it even crazier, you know. Yeah, um, man. Yeah. Like, like you're talking about the, 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 the idea as well of just making – because uh, it's all in the hand, the movement of the hand, you know, you, you're thinking about something and, uh, and then you're trying to get it out through your hand. Even if you're looking at reference and you're trying to draw it, it's the movements of your hand. So the first preliminary drawing is nine times out of 10, like you were alluding to before, that sometimes it's just perfect, almost perfect straight away. But the, the idea is, is that the movements of your hands are so natural and, and that, that you're just making shapes first, you know, and uh, and right. that's what's the most, I think for me, the most rewarding thing when you're drawing is like, you're looking at something, you're trying to make a shape, you're trying to make something um, look like something, and it's a one little bit where you're like, oh yeah, shit, man, and then it's like a little anchor to work from, maybe it's an eye or maybe it's the beak or something that seems to sit in the right way or something like that, and then it, and then it, and then it, it evolves from there and that's super addictive stuff man i think it's really addictive oh yeah i love it that's it's made my process so fun it's you know i see other artists looking from the outside in like yo how do you do that and you can almost see the jealousy like they're like fuck i gotta like make a stencil and i'm just like drawing shit on but you know for me i'm like man i see these guys doing photorealism they're just like you fucking put it in a program and run it through a thermal fax. I'm like, oh man, I wish I just did. Like, why did I choose to be the guy that draws shit on? Yeah. I just be making portraits. Uh, but you know, it's the part that I love. I can't, I can't let it go, man. My favorites, like, so I usually use two color sharpies. Um, that being said, some people do have sharpie reactions. So, and it's never a big deal. It'll just kind of like welt up the line work a little bit initially, and then maybe the lines won't be as crisp. So when people tell me like, Hey, it was a lot, like extremely itchy when it was healing. I'm like, did the lines bump up? They're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I won't use Sharpie. So then I'll use like the purple skin scribes and stuff like the carbon yeah. markers, which don't really stay on super well. And I, I don't get a preliminary drawing with those. I have to like make it good the first try, but usually I use green and purple Sharpies. I'll use like a lime green to start. 
And that's my favorite because the lime green doesn't show up crazy good. And I can like really be sloppy and like just play with shape and playing with those shapes is like, like so freeing because I have no obligation to be perfect. Like I can literally fuck around and draw a lot of the times if I'm drawing something that say has like an arm or a wing, I'll draw like four versions of it. And then I pick the version I like, but then I'm like, yo, what if I take two of those versions and make them echoes? Like it's like got motion, you know? Uh Uh, So it's like sometimes playing with those drawings, it kind of entices ideas that you might not have had in your head when you started it, but then you get this vision going and you're like, I have something I want to say with this. Here it goes. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's wicked. Fucking awesome, man. So, uh, again, super inspired by this. This is going to be awesome, man. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you prefer to work in color or do you prefer to work in black and gray when, when you're tattooing, when you're tattooing, not when you're oil painting or anything? Like that? Uh, it kind of depends on my mood. Uh, I, I really love the pop of color. Um, but like I said, it's, it's longevity, I feel like, is much shorter than black and gray. Like, you know, you get like, and this is being generous, you get like six, seven years where it looks fucking dope, if it's yeah. done right. Uh, and then, you know, it starts really getting pastel and lightening up over time to where black and gray, when it lightens up, you just rerun the lines, the black, and all of the blacks from before, you step the black back just a little bit, so your black from before becomes the dark gray. And you get even more depth and then you rerun the highlights and the shit looks better than when you first did it. Yeah. So, um, and that being said, I feel like I can be much more lazy with black and gray. I'm not dealing with color theory. I don't have to mix up colors in the tube. You know, I'm working on a percentage system where I have like a hundred percent, 75%, 50, 25, four drops, two drops. And that's my whole fucking run right there. Yeah. And then I kind of just compartmentalize where I'm like, this section is going to be my 75 and my 100% because it's a dark area. This is going to be my 50, 50 and my 25. And, you know, I work from there so I can kind of be a little lazier. And then uh, with that, I can then uh, try to achieve more depth than I can with color. Color, right. you get more contrast with color, but with black and gray, you can achieve more depth, I feel like. Um and then I kind of change my mindset. When I'm doing color, all of my black and white is in the foreground. And when I'm doing all my four or, or when I'm doing black and gray, all of my black is in the background and my lights are in the foreground. Um, and then if I'm doing a sleeve, I'll try to do the bottom half black foreground, light or black background, light foreground. And then as it works up the sleeve, I'll do the black, the black background lightening up to like maybe an object flying that has, you know, black and white with a medium background, like almost take it to like how I would treat color with the top half. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I, I really love black and gray because, you know, coming from Southern California, I started with almost like a Chicano style, like doing a lot of like, uh, only God can judge me and fucking <laughs> yeah. script. That's where my script comes from. Uh, and I'm a graffiti kid. You know, I grew up in a, you know, predominantly Hispanic neighborhood. So we would go into the, you know, the drainage ditches and fuck with spray paint and uh, paint cans and all kinds of shit. Uh, so I kind of, you know, it's almost like heritage to me, the black and gray. Like that's that's where my roots started. When I first started tattooing, uh, believe it or not, everyone called me a uh, little booth. Uh, referring to Paul Booth, you know, I did a lot of really dark imagery. um, And everyone was just thinking I was going to be this crazy black and gray artist. But, you know, the graffiti kid in me was like, yo, but when you do those bombers with neon green and orange and fucking purple outlines, that's what's up. So then, you know, it that gave me the drive to want to learn color. But first and foremost, I learned black and gray. Wow, wicked, man. That's wicked. You, You can tell that you've I love it, man. <clears throat> and I, I think it, the best thing about or what I've got from speaking to you today, like, like, is just how much you are passionate about it, and and how much you actually work you put into progressing as an artist. And you can tell with the way you vocalize things. You're great at talking. You're ve- great at vocalizing what you want to say about your approach to things. Um, do you ever do anything like? Uh, have you been to any art classes? Have you, are you, you know, have you, are you someone that would do that? You know. 
Yeah, so uh, I wouldn't, you know, I don't want to put this out there like that, but I wouldn't really advocate uh, advocate art schools because they put you on other people's art programs and what, what worked for them. And uh, from what I've seen, you know, a lot of the people who I know who have degrees from art school, they kind of don't feel great about it, you know. Um, I feel like a lot of what you learn about art uh, you learn outside, and I, I have taken art classes uh, in 2007, 2008. I did a paint, my first oil painting workshop with Jeff Gogway, which was my first experience with oil painting. I'd only done acrylics up to that point. Um, and at that point, he was putting out so many fantastic oil paintings. Uh, I was like, dude, I, I want to fucking, I want to paint like that. That looks awesome. And he made it look so effortless. And then when I got there, I realized it was insanely hard and I still don't make it look effortless when I do it. Um, but he was doing great stuff at the time. Uh, I didn't take another art class until uh, a couple years back, which was the, the IMC here in Massachusetts, the Illustrative Masters class. And I got to work hand in hand with uh, Boris Vallejo, uh, Scott Fisher, who did a lot really? of Magic the Gap cards yeah um dan dos santos uh Gina uh donato um a lot of these guys work for wizards of the coast doing magic cards doing book covers and when you as a tattooer a, a couple other tattooers were there um painting and when you do this art class with these guys who do art as a living like not tattooing like actual paintings and stuff you realize how small you are like I went from being like a, a well-versed tattooer who could, you know, go, go to conventions and get trophies and competitions to where now I'm working next to these guys who've been painting for years. And I'm about, I'm like this big next to them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, neither painting that I did, the course is a week long. It was like, it's pretty expensive. It's like 2,500 bucks, which for me, it was, you know, it's a tax write-off for one as an artist. Yeah. And for me, paying that much money was like paying for time off. I had to go learn how to paint better and sit in these classes. Um, and, you know, I learned a lot. And I took this class two years in a row because it was that good. For anyone out there looking to learn uh, art, I would say, you know, get some knowledge before taking this class. This class is super advanced. Um, but it's so fucking good for being inspired and like some of the students who were there were fucking insane and had already done book covers and things like this. Uh, they were super talented, but the advantage to this is I got to go and choose the artists that I looked up to and who I wanted to learn from. And man, I got a critique from Boris Vallejo and for me as a kid, um, when I was a kid growing up in the Southwest, uh, being super poor, I didn't have a lot, man. I, you know, I had a black and white TV that barely worked. So what I did is I went up in the mountains and I caught lizards and snakes. Mm -hmm. So one of my neighbors gave me a Southwest field guide, which basically had a list of all the snakes, uh, lizards and stuff and insects in it. And in it, he glued a postcard that was painted by Boris Vallejo that had this badass, like, Amazon-looking chick with her tits out, like, riding a dragon. And my mom saw it and was like, no fucking way, and wanted to take this book from me. And granted, I'm probably, like, seven. <laughs> and, you know, my dad, like, took the book and was like, the boy gets to keep the book. Like, it's cartoon titties. Like, it's not real. It's fine. Amazing. And my mom was like, my mom was kind of pissed about it. Um, and my dad was not known for making the greatest decisions. But for me, <laughs> it was the art that prevailed. Because it was art, I got to keep the titties. And I was like, yo, this is dope. So meeting Boris Vallejo, I told him this story. And the people around me, like, I was just, like, so, like, stoked to meet him because he's just like a sweet little man and his wife julie bella was there painting too and she's fucking phenomenal and he loves her to death it was probably her titties i was looking at to be honest <laughs> because he would use her as a, mu a muse to do these paintings and uh i told him i was like boris like beyond you inspiring me 
inspiring me as an artist. Like you gave me titties as a kid and that was fucking awesome as a young <laughs> kid where, you know, porn on the internet wasn't a thing, you know? Yeah. So I got to check out this fucking, and the dragon was badass. So I was like, it's all of the things that are great right here. Uh, and the people around me are just like looking like, holy shit, I can't believe this guy is saying this shit to Boris. And Boris looks at me just with this biggest smile on his face, like nodding his head, like, this guy gets it. Yeah. And he shook my hand, was like, hell yeah. And then when I took the class the next year, I'm pretty sure Boris remembered me because he looked at me and smiled and gave me like a nod, like, what's up? <laughs> it was cool, man. It was cool. But, um, you know, no, anyways, pretty- what I would say is, you know, look at, the artists that you value online, a lot of them do classes. Like, you know, I feel, you know, I'm glad you reached out to me because I do, I don't know if you can tell, but I do love teaching. I love talking about my work, Um, but I'm still young. I'm still learning. And I feel like there's some art terms and things that I have yet to learn. So I'm still trying to pick up on this before I'm ready to really start uh, teaching. That's kind of going to be a later in life thing for me. you know, I don't mind doing podcasts. I fucking love this shit and get my voice out there. But eventually I will be teaching art classes. You know, it's kind of my, uh, when my hands aren't doing as much as they used to, I'm going to start going this way, you know. Um, but there's so many artists out there that teach classes online that you can just look at someone and be like, yo, I want to paint like them. Go do a class with them. You'll learn a lot more than fucking paying 60 grand in an art school uh, for a very little, you know, I think in that one week class for 2,500 bucks, I learned more than most people learn their whole, uh, paid art career, art school career, you know? Um, so I, I think that stuff's super important, man. And kind of choosing wisely when you do those things, you know, um, I definitely have known art classes where, you know, people don't learn as much, but it doesn't matter. I think you can, learn just as much from someone who doesn't know what they're doing from someone who does but you know the choice is yours to make of whether you want to go take the class and check their stuff out yeah man yeah exactly i think again man i will say this like you are definitely very good at talking like um and you will if if you love teaching you will be a really good teacher because your your articulation of of what you want to actually say is uh is very good like i find myself just lost l- listening to you and then i've got to come out with something myself but no i i really really enjoy listening to you talk about your process the way you work and and, and stuff like that. it's incredible man honestly you should definitely i'd be, it'd be exciting to see you do seminars especially because you're such an accomplished artist across so many mediums but especially in your especially in tattoos as well like i, I don't know there's something so matt driscoll about your tattoo work that it just sticks out so much like i i, I don't know it's, it's hard to it is hard to actually vocalize what you find what you what you find so incredible about another person's work isn't it because you know like you're just doing your thing and you will inspire and influence other people with your work um, and that goes back to maybe what you were talking about when people steal things from you uh, what is the saying? Something about uh, flatter, uh, you know, like uh, imitation is the purest form of flatter. I can't remember what it is, right, but right. yeah, it's the idea of like you know, if if somebody's going to steal your stuff, they're literally that inspired by you that they just want Absolutely. to do the thing that you're doing. You know, they want to almost be you to a certain degree. Uh, but that's uh, it's quite an amazing thing to do, you know, because it shows that you have being so open-minded on your journey as a human being trying to be creative because that's all you're doing you know like that's all we are doing we're just being creative in any medium we can find uh in our own journey and you've picked up and been that open-minded that you've become as accomplished as you have man i think it's fucking incredible like i, I your work is one of them and i can't wait for people that i've uh, no what i'm going to say is i can't wait for people that don't know you that listen to this podcast or when i put it out there that people find this or stumble across this that find your work because it's so addictive to look at as your work like um i will say that like it's so addictive because no matter what there's a consistency in quality uh in everything that goes with it not just like tattoo the tattoo wise like the saturation the tattoo technique that goes in 
but just the artistic side of everything about it, the way you make something sound, you, 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 um, you have a really good way of haloing things, you know, like uh, making things pull away from something by putting a halo on something. Sometimes people can do that and it gets lost. Oh, but they don't make up the, the uh, uh, I've learned it over time, they don't give enough space to, 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 to behind the background and the image. I don't even know if you follow what I'm saying, but the halo around something or, yeah, to make something stand out. You, you have it. You, you have a really good knack of making that look so um, natural and, well, not natural because it's not really natural, but like not forced, you know, man. I love your work, right. that's what I'm trying to say. I really appreciate that, man. You've got a lot of kind words going on, dude, and I, I appreciate it. You know, I think it's hard, you know, being inside myself, like stepping outside and trying to see my style because I, you know, I do so many different things. Like, I, it's hard for me to see my style, but uh, over the last few years, I feel like I've made a push to where I have started showing those things a bit more in my work. Like, I'm using the same kind of rules and formulas for what works for my personal artistic voice. And, uh, you know, I've been getting a lot of positive uh, input on that and people saying that, you know, they can see my stuff out of other people's work and know it's mine. And, you know, that's always super flattering because I feel like in the art world, that's what everyone wants. And, yeah. you know, they strive for, and I feel like a lot of questions that people ask uh, for someone who is very uh, stylistically specific is they're like, how do you develop a style? And I don't think there's an answer to that, except that you got to just keep working. The more work you can put out, the more formulaic it becomes. And then it becomes yours after a while because you keep doing the same things, even within different subject matters that uh, will shine through and show up as your own. Yeah, 100%. Uh, 100%. Uh, one of the last things I'll follow on to here, because we've been nearly going for an hour and a half. It's amazing how fast it goes. But um, what I want to say, what I want to ask you is, do you have any, like, and this is such a strange question to ask, but I'm going to ask it anyway, but do you, do you have any, like, plans for the, for, the, for, the, for the future? It's very hard with what's going on right now, but have you anything in the future that you, you've got going on? I see you, you, you're doing uh, palette knife. Uh, you've been using palette knife for palette knife painting and stuff like that. Anything that you're wanting to do in the future or have you got on your books that you're, that's, you're going to push or anything? Um, artistically, uh, I, I do have another painting. Uh, I did the kind of the Renaissance style painting you saw not too yeah. long ago. And that's super fun. I, I do a photograph and then I alter the photograph through, you know, like filters and uh, just adjust, adjusting through Photoshop. Um, and then, you know, it's kind of like photo replication, but where I make it fun is playing with brush strokes. Like instead of trying to blend everything out, like a lot of, you know, photorealism people do, I try to pick the color and then make one swipe for every section. So I'm basically, it's almost like the same as like how I, I do palette knife. I literally mix the color one pass, mix the new color one pass. So it becomes fun that way. So I do have another Renaissance style painting that I'm going to do. Um, I, you know, it's probably not going to come out until next winter because now that it's, you know, we're almost out of quarantine, I'm hoping. Uh, and then once I get back into work mode, it's very busy until winter. And then I can't go outside. You know, I just, I, I do a lot of fishing. I do a lot of outdoor hiking yeah. and uh, traveling through the summer. And then winter is usually my painting months. So this potentially might be one of the last paintings until, you know, November, December. Um, so I've got that in the works, uh, just because I did get a lot of positive, uh, you know, feedback on the Renaissance style painting, you know? Uh, so I feel like when I do get a lot of certain types of feedback on certain types of painting, it gives me a little bit of drive to do more things like that until I get bored with the style and then I'll try something new. Um, you know, when I was doing watercolor, it, it really didn't get that much attention. Um, I feel like there's so many amazing watercolor artists out there and it's such an easy medium to use. A lot of people are really proficient at it and use it a lot better than me. So I just, you know, I kind of dropped that. But uh, besides that, um, going back into teaching, I, I am when things are a little more mellowed out and I just feel like the environment's good. I'm going to put on a small painting workshop 
uh, to where I'm going to do one day of painting and color theory uh, with oils and figuring out you know, how to make color with a primary palette. And then the next day I'm going to do a sit in on a tattoo uh, type thing where I'm going to do a one shot banger with a very primary palette and uh, kind of show people how I translate from doing painting projects into uh, tattoo projects and how those things kind of coincide to get people really kicked off, um, which that's going to be a very uh, limited class. I think I'm only going to limit it to 10 people or something even less than that. So um, that'll be super cool. But uh, yeah, aside from that, I kind of, I don't always, it's going to sound weird, but I don't always think ahead that far. I, I usually live in the now and try to enjoy things as they come to me. Uh, you know, as, as we've all learned in recent events, uh, life can be very quick changing and change what your plans can be. So, you know, hopefully I can remain an artist through a lot of this stuff, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, if st stuff gets too weird and I can't pay my bills through this, I'm pretty crafty at doing other things. So I might have to find something else. You know, I really doubt that's going to happen, but you never know. I, I kind of just take it day by day and try to enjoy the time I have and, you know, uh, try not to work too hard sometimes. Yeah, yeah. All work, uh, you know, no play makes you. I can't, again, I'm really bad with the sayings here, but yeah, I, it's true, is that man? You can't, you can't work all the time, and you don't, and that's really good. And I think that's what you, you seem to need that. And I think anyone who's at a certain level, you can't work all the time. You've got an, you've got a. I think one of the secrets is connecting with nature. You got to get back outside, man. You can't be because we spend so much time inside. You know, like. Um, as artists, you know, like you, 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 you send so much of your time just stationary, you know, so to be outside in the fresh air, whether it's hiking or anything like that or fishing, um, you know, I think it's super important, but you, you, you're incredible, man. I can't, honestly, I can't thank you enough for agreeing to come onto the podcast. I, uh, I kind of, I fell into this in a certain degree because I've had this podcast for a bit but then since lockdown, I, cho I chose to start my own version of like having long form conversations with people I find influential and uh, inspirational and you were one of them. And I'm, I can't thank you enough for saying, as soon as you said yes, I was like, fuck yeah, man. Yes, I can't wait. And then I just put my son to bed and I, was, I couldn't get down here fast enough to, to talk to you. So honestly, man, I can't thank you enough. You're amazing. And thank you for agreeing to do it. Well, thanks for having me, Lee. It's uh, it's been too long, man. We gotta hopefully. I'm I'm gonna try to make it over to uh, uh, Wales sometime. Uh, hopefully before the end of the year uh, to hang out with our buddy Will over there. Um, and uh, how close are you to there, man? As soon as you, as soon as you, if you do do that, I'm I want I need to go and see Will this year. So if you do do that and you're thinking about doing that, I literally had Will on here the other day on the podcast. The other week, should I say. That's awesome. And I spoke to him about it, and that is something that we're going to set up. I need to go down and see him because me and him have done some collaborations and all that kind of stuff, and I want to see his new studio, and he's, he's an absolute legend, is, is William. So, yeah, if you do do that, then I'm down as well. I'll let you we'll, know. Yeah. I'll let you know. Let me know. That's man. awesome, man. Oh, yeah, dude. Thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. No worries, man. I'll speak to you soon, though, yeah? Absolutely, dude. All right, man. Take care. Keep it up. All right. You too, Lee. Bye-bye, man. Bye-bye. Later.